Hello and welcome to part two of our Lifecycle AEM 101 series, where today we're going to talk about form prep or getting your getting your first form ready to go. And so we're using again Adobe Experience Manager forms, and this is the Designer 6.3 version. But if you're using Lifecycle ES2 or ES3 or 4, it should be applicable to everything you have there too. And so what I want to show you today is when you're creating your first form or when you're creating a starting point template for all forms, I want you to do a few things to set up your initial form so you don't have to repeat process over and over. And the first thing you see me doing is renaming some of these objects that are called unnamed. And also, I like to go in here to drawing aids and set the interval to sixteenth of an inch. That just makes these little dots a little finer and if I snap to grid and show grid um, when, I'm, when I'm putting content on the on the form it'll snap a little finer to the grid so in today's part two I'd like to cover a few things that will help you get your initial form set up and avoid problems down the line or avoid, avoid repeating uh, lots and lots of steps down the line so we're going to talk about file types first. So in Lifecycle there are basically two types of files you can save. So if you go to File, Save As and you look underneath the Save As file type you have a static PDF form and a dynamic PDF form. And for the purposes of all my videos I always use dynamic. And the reason is I want my forms to grow and dynamically change. If I choose static that won't happen. And things like JavaScript code and expanding text field and expanding tables and all those types of things won't work. There's a, a couple of other file types here, XDP, TDS, these are just templates and they're all basically creating the same type of form as the dynamic XML form but they're not using the moniker.pdf and so a style sheet also is something new in designer, uh, AEM designer that uh, I won't even get into in the, in the 101 series. So I'm always going to save as a dynamic PDF and I'm just going to save to desktop. I'm just going to call this template. And so that creates template.pdf and it's exactly what you see right here. And so again I want to make sure I maintain a hierarchy consistent with top to bottom orientation even though that really doesn't matter right now. It will later on. So we have different kinds of file types. Also, uh, I explained last time XML source, and this time I just want to cover that in a little bit more detail. Remember, a dynamic PDF is not like your PDF A, your PDF slash D, all those other kinds of PDFs you're used to, to dealing with if you just dealt with Acrobat in the past. Dynamic PDFs are XML based, and they're completely different file types. They just have the .pdf extension on them so that Windows and Mac OS can know to open them up in Acrobat. If you have a, a browser that's set to open PDF files and you try to download a dynamic PDF and open a browser, you'll have uh, problems with that. And we'll discuss that later on. But this is the basic structure of the file. It's got a lot of, PD, it's got a lot of XML type tags in it and each object is represented by uh, something like this. The draw object is this text field right here. I'm sorry, this text box that we have right here. And it's defined by XML tags. Also, um, I want to talk about form properties. So every form has form properties. If you go to the file menu and select form properties, it will open up this window and there's a lot of things here but I only really want to focus on a few and that's the defaults. So here in defaults you can choose what type of target version of Adobe Reader or Adobe Acrobat you want to use and for the most part it's best to go to the latest. That gives you the fullest features. If you have an older version of Lifecycle like ES2 you probably don't see this high up. You probably can only go to 10 or later but uh, since I have Designer AEM Designer 6.3 I can go to all the way to 12 which is basically Adobe Acrobat DC and so I like to set that I like to always set default languages JavaScript and run at client not that this really matters here but I like to have that set that way 
And then the other thing I like to do before I start a form is I like to get my default font set. By default, when you install the software, Myriad Pro, which is an Adobe font, is set and the size is 10. If you don't like Myriad Pro or you want to set it to something like Arial, you can do that here. And this is for the captions and here's for the values. So the difference in those two settings I'll show you. If you were to add a text field to your, to your form, what it's saying is the default font and caption and would be Arial and the default value font would be Arial by setting those default fonts. Now that's different than what I've done because I've actually set Times New Roman as this default. But if you were just to drag any old any old uh, time field like this, Arial 10 is the default. I've preset this one on my own to be Times New Roman and overwritten the defaults. That's why it comes up that way. So set your default fonts, set your file type as dynamic, and then also we want to preview dynamic XML in our PDF. So let me go back into form properties. Preview this tab right here. I want this set to dynamic form. And right now I don't have a data file because again we're not talking about data binding or anything like that in this 101 series of tutorials. But that's just good to, to have. So if you preview PDF right here, you're previewing as a dynamic PDF, even though right now in this example that doesn't matter. So we talked about drawing aids already, and now I just want to say the final thing you want to do here is save your form as a template. So this is what I want to do. I want to go ahead and get rid of these two things. And now I just have form one, one master page, one content area, and a main page. And I want to save this as a form template. And what I'm doing here is I'm saying from every time in the future, this is where I want to start from. So I don't have to go back and reset my drawing aid interval to 16. I don't have to go back and change my default fonts. I can just start from this point every time. So when I come to File and Open Template, I'm right at this point. I don't have to redo that every time. And so that's all for this video. I just wanted to give you that setup. Now we're prepared to really start our first form. We talked about in part one the GUI, the application itself, how to set it up, how to get it looking in a way that's most helpful when you're working. And then now in part two we've talked about how to get yourself a, a template so that you can begin from a good starting point each time. And so in, in the next video in part three we'll talk about naming objects, master pages, and creating your first form. And so remember that IT problems are always simple, but they're never easy. And we'll see you next time.